Thank you, Mark. Well, I want to welcome all you all, and uh, for the snowbirds uh, who came from cold country, we turned the nice weather on for you today. I hope you appreciate that. And uh, of course, as Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, I want to tell you that I'm extremely proud of this event. I am so happy we made it happen. Thanks to our colleagues from Tuskegee University, Barbara Baker, to be our partners in this endeavor, Jay Lamar, the director of our Center for the Arts and Humanities, Carol Marshall Drawn. This is a brand new name, so I got to remember we have a very generous donor. So when you come back next year, we will have a beautiful new, we will have beautiful new plural buildings. And then we're going to have the next conference there, so it's something to look forward to. Um, Mark, I want to thank you. I also want to mention that we just promoted Mark to Assistant Director of uh, Pebble Hill. So uh, congratulations, Mark. This is brand new. I also want to mention that we have uh, George Crandall here, Chair of our English Department. Thank you also, George, and all your colleagues for cooperating here for the symposium. And. Uh, Needless to say, this is going to be a fabulous event. Unfortunately, Albert Murray is not with us. He is getting a little on the older side. And, um, you know, he is just not quite as able to travel anymore, but he will be with us in spirit, I'm quite sure. And I'm just seeing Robert Weigel, who made it punctually as a good fellow German, <laughs> and is chair of foreign languages. Foreign languages is also supporting this symposium. Thank you all for that. All right, now, Barb gave me a little outline here last night that I worked through diligently this morning because she knows I get sidetracked and I want to make absolutely certain that I do not miss any important things I am supposed to say. Also, I want to thank Emmett. He is our Associate Dean for Curriculum and Teaching and also a specialist in communications and journalism. So we are being taped here, as most of you know. So this is... Uh, you know, this is still time to use your lipstick or comb or whatever, you know, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> All right, our fabulous people here, Jay Lamar and Barb Baker, they are really the leaders in making this happen, and they have actually worked on this event for a total of 12 years. Of course, with sidesteps and like high and lows in the whole organization, so it's not like we worked on this every day for 12 years, but <laughs> it's been quite, quite some time in the making to have this happen, so we're very proud of it. <coughs> Albert Murray, of course, is very significant to Alabama's cultural and literary life, and he is the author of 13 books, and among them, my favorites, South to a Very Old Place, The Omni Americans, Stomping the Blues, and The Blue Devils of Nada. His blues theories place Alabama and the South in the center of the discussion of American identity and art. This symposium continues the tradition of the College of Liberal Arts Carolyn Marshall Drawn Center for the Arts and Humanities efforts to recognize the achievements of outstanding Alabamians in the humanities, literature, culture, and art, and to make Auburn University, and particularly the College of Liberal Arts, a center for celebrating and educating others about the accomplishments of outstanding Alabamians such as Albert Murray. Um, through Jay and Barb, Auburn and Tuskegee have cooperated in bringing Albert Murray and his family to Alabama three times, 96, 99, and 2003. In 2003, Murray received the Distinguished Artist Award from the Alabama Humanities Foundation, thanks to the efforts of many scholars who are here with us in this room today. Now. The first two speakers are going to be Jay Lamar, our director, and Barbara Baker, professor at Tuskegee University. And Jay was too busy to give me a bio. They were working her very hard here, but it's very easy for me to say that she absolutely rocks. <laughs> she, uh, she is a wonderful person, you know. The Carolyn Marshall Drawn Center for the Arts and Humanities is the outreach arm for the College of Liberal Arts. And technically, we are reaching out to the community, mainly in the humanities and art, but we are reaching out in every area. We included the culture, the sciences, I mean, we've put politics, psychology, Jay's been all over the place, and you know, most of you in this room know her, and uh, I'm happy to say when she's in the paper, it's always for a good purpose. <laughs> and that's just about the best thing I can say. Um, Jay, we're very proud, everything you're doing, Mark's doing, the staff of Pebble Hill, Great crew. 
you're going to be the first speaker, but I have instructions from BARP, and I do have a BARP bio that I'm supposed to introduce at the same time, you know, for our video technicalities. So BARP Baker is actually a graduate from the English department here at Auburn University. We're very proud of her. And she is now a professor of English at Tuskegee University, henceforth making possible this wonderful link with Tuskegee. Her work focuses mainly on black and southern aesthetics, especially as related to music and American literature. Barb was an R&B musician for about a decade before she got into academe. The author of The Blues Aesthetic and the Making of American Identity, she has also published essays in Post Bellum Pre Harlem, African American Literature and Culture, White Scholars African American Texts, as well as in Southern Quarterly, Black Arts Quarterly, the Southern Humanities Review, and the Companion to Southern Literature. She is the recipient of two grants from the National Endowment for the Humanities and has served as a mentor in the UNCF Mellon Fellowship Program. Jay and Barb, please kick us off. This is really the culmination of many hopes and dreams and efforts that have really and truly taken uh, more than a decade uh, to get us here. And it's just a, a great thing that we're together and talking about Albert Murray. And I, I just wish that he were here. Um, it's really a distinct pleasure for me to be here with this gathering of scholars, writers, and readers to talk about Al. There is so much to talk about, and there's so much to learn from the papers we're going to hear today. And I have to say, I think it would please Al no end to be here, and I, he would just love to be talking with us and giving it right back to us. My contribution here at the beginning, and believe me, I'm glad I'm first, is really just a short introduction. It's just a sort of cracking of the door on all that we have to look forward to. Although, if I'm completely honest, I also have to confess that I have a little bit of an agenda here um, in, the, in the introduction, and that is to make a stab at laying a claim. For any which way you turn him, Albert Murray is ours. That is, Alabama's. And we are his. This is true because he has helped us see and understand ourselves in ways we never saw or understood ourselves before. In fact, in his very act of naming the places, people, and plants, the smells, tastes, the habits, the expressions that originated here, he has revealed their capacity for meaning and imagination, their capacity for signifying. That capacity may always have been there, it surely was, but it was Murray who called it out, applied his technique, and followed the boss man's directions to play it with soul. Talking about the rhythm and tempo of the life as the folks came to know it and live it in the down-home U.S. of A., Murray has done nothing less than give us a world, enlarging and potentializing for the whole multicolored lot of us. For his epic task, caught the context is important. And if you cast the fortune of a Negro child born in the early part of the 20th century in a tiny South Alabama town, not even the most audacious prognosticator might have had the vision to see through that thick hedge of time and place. Race, culture, location, timing, everything should have conspired to grow up a thorny barrier behind which the boy, like Sleeping Beauty, was kept, numbed if not asleep. But it turns out that prickly hedge exactly suits our hero, who says, my name is also Jack the Rabbit because my home is in the briar patch. Novelist, essayist, biographer, poet, and critic, Murray has bounded again and again into the places where more fearful folk fear to tread, urged on in his quest by a sense of destiny, planted early by Miss Lexine Metcalf herself, who asked, who if not you? Who if not you, my splendid young man? Who if not you may have to go where you will go and find out what you will find out? There can be no question about Murray's response. Although he did not begin publishing in earnest until after his retirement from the U.S. Air Force, since the publication of the Omni Americans in 1970, Murray has continued through more than a dozen books to offer startling, transformative, deeply intellectual, and highly creative insights into art, music, literature, and American culture. Miss Metcalf and others asked the question of Murray and then sent him on his way to find out what he needed to find out. By the 1930s, he was at Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University. He walked the same halls and sat in the same classrooms as his longtime friend and companion on the quest, Ralph Ellison, whose Invisible Man found its first perfect reader in Murray. Both Murray's most recent novel, The Magic Keys, and the decade of correspondence with Ellison, of his correspondence with Ellison collected in Trading Twelves, shows two men vitally engaged in and by the world. 
Ellison called it when he said, according to Murray, man, I'm trying to take chitlins to the Waldorf, and I suspect you're also up to the same caper. At Tuskegee, both men pursued what would be a lifelong habit of reading widely and deeply. Murray consciously checking the library slips to note where the upperclassman Ellison had gone before. Reading's the liberating device because it makes the world yours, he has said. How can you segregate a guy who's coming to terms with the whole world? Hemingway, Mann, Auden, Freud, Faulkner, Proust, Malraux, Burke, the Iliad, and the Odyssey. For Murray, literature is basic equipment for living. Because, he says, without a sense of form, without a sense of purpose, middle and end, what we have is insanity. With the publication in 1970 of the Omni Americans, Murray staked out a brambled fill territory. In his first book, he asserted that race matters tremendously in America, but it is not a simple bitonal composition of black and white. In terms both more and less complex, Murray found both races complicit, partners in creating the culture and atmosphere of our 20th century country. He put it to us thus, one can be a race statistic, or one can use all the tools of art and intellect to enlarge the scope and therefore the potential of the larger scene. Throughout his career, Murray has seen in music that potential for enlarging and understanding. His very first legendary hero in the flesh was guitar playing Luzanna Chali, whose sporty limp was, he has written, a downright epical statement. Time on the road with one of the biggest bands of the era did not convince Murray to become a professional musician, but in addition to deepening his musical knowledge and feeling, it also gave him a literary language, structure, metaphor. Long before the 1985 Good Morning Blues, autobiography of Count Basie is told to Albert Murray, Murray was struck by the richness and the aptness of the uniquely American musical languages of jazz and blues. Again, the rhythm and the tempo of life as the folks came to know it and live it in the down-home U.S. of A. In Stomping the Blues, The Hero in the Blues, and From the Briar Patch, on Context, Procedure, and American Identity, he uses technique, feeling, improvisation, metronome time versus pulse to inform, explore, and transcend. Over everything is the fully orchestrated blues statement, which offers Murray notes, a language for acknowledging the fact that life is a low-down, dirty shame, and for improvising or riffing on the exigencies of the predicament. For our questing artist, everything depends on the regional particulars, the idiomatic details, the down-home conventions, the provincial customs and folkways. Murray has always used his Alabama landscape for setting, image, and ideas. Alabama appears in the novels that draw extensively on Murray's own life, south to a very old place, train whistle guitar, the spyglass tree, seven league boots, and the magic keys. The chinkapin thickets and the blue poplar trails of Mobile County, the thin, gray, ghost-whispering midwinter drizzle, Stagley and Outlaw Railroad Bill, the sound of freight trains headed to Meridian, the China Berry Tree and the Briar Patch, the language of real people in a real place. These are his regional particulars. Murray writes, Gasoline Point, Alabama would always be that original of all geographical spots and temporal locations as well, from which you measure distances, determine directions, and define destinations all of which are never any less metaphorical than actual. The corner of Dauphin and Royal in Mobile, where you used to stand waiting for the trolley car, with checker cabs and chauffeur-driven Cadillacs and Packards and Pierce Arrows passing, with so many different kinds of people and many languages all around you, because there were ships flying flags of all nations docked at the foot of Government Street, and newsboys chanting the headline against the backdrop, background of the Empire State tallness of the Van Antwerp building you knew very well that where you stood was at the crossroads of the world. Alabama is a point of departure and destination. It is home not only in the sense of a place with people, landmarks, and place names, but also as the very oldest place in the world, somewhere you are likely to find yourself remembering your way back to, no matter how many miles north by east from those chinkapin thickets and old crepe myrtle blossoms you might go. As O'Connor Professor of Literature at Colgate University and through stints at the University of Massachusetts, Emory University, and the University of Missouri, Murray has exerted a powerful influence on a generation of writers, thinkers, and artists. Author and critic Stanley Crouch once described him as my mentor and far more my father than the fellow whose blood runs in my veins. Henry Louis Gates wrote that finding the answer to the question, what does it mean to be black, requires rejecting all exclusionary responses to the question as Albert Murray, the great contrarian of American cultural criticism, has inspired generations of thinkers to do. 
Another describes Murray as possessed of the poet's language, the novelist's sensibility, the essayist's clarity, the jazz man's imagination, the gospel singer's depth of feeling. Another asserts that he is as close to a classic man of letters as one might find in our country today. And finally, Murray is one of the best kept secrets in contemporary American literature. He is our premier writer about jazz and blues, an incisive critic, and a social commentator of wide-ranging vision. Whether mentoring Wynton Marsalis in the creation of jazz at Lincoln Center, consulting with Ken Burns on the making of jazz, being interviewed on National Public Radio, or passionately talking one-on-one -on -one about books and ideas, Murray inspires and expands, challenges and liberates. Circumstances create heroes. In their rugged individualism and acceptance of adversity as an inescapable condition of human existence, they show flexibility or the ability to swing. They are self-reliant. They have charisma. They are not cynical. Forged in a frame of acceptance or the willingness to rise to the occasion, heroes produce their personal best. In his quest for the magic keys, some golden, some silver, some platinum, and maybe some of some as yet undiscovered alloy, or perhaps some sharp, some flat, and some natural. Murray tells us that we do not receive wisdom. We must discover it for ourselves after a journey through the wilderness that no one else can make for us, that no one else can spare us. For our wisdom is the point of view from which we come at last to view the world. It is worth remembering Murray's coda. Improvisation is the ultimate human, i.e. heroic endowment. It is the ability to operate on dynamics equivalent to those of the vamp, the riff, and certainly the break, which jazz musicians regard as the moment of truth, or that disjuncture that should bring out your personal best. Who not you, if indeed. Who if not you, indeed. My stories are really about what it means to be human, Murray has said. Through his work, he peels back the layers of individual history, character, and voice to reveal, in the form and intent of our original music, an American mythology. Not a make-believe cartoon, but a mighty story of human existence and potential that finds a narrative, a code, and a hero in the blues. My task in this introduction is supposedly to make the case for Murray as an Alabama writer and to show how he is of a piece with other native sons and daughters who came before him or are contemporary. Even the most casual reader, if such really exists for Murray, will see that the place forms a baseline to all his compositions. Like almost every serious Alabama writer, he takes its measure, grapples with its contradictions, loves its loveliness, and rages against its failures. What he also does is enlarge our understanding of it by showing it in its profound fullness and by helping us to see it in the context of the universal, and so bringing to literature a vernacular that is unique but undeniably genuine, and in its fundamental realness as old as humankind itself. Vernacular comes from the Latin for a slave born in the master's house. Actually, I think we were born in Murray's house. And the real task of this conference and the papers collectively may be to show how our art and literature will never be the same after him. So we take our measure of the world of Jack the Rabbit, the scoot about man. As one of the most prodigious talkers ever, he really would love to be here and love to engage with us. I wish he were here. But we can proceed in his spirit following him as he goes on telling us what he tells us, including the also and the also of all of which. And we can join him in saying we, will still, we are still trying to keep it swinging, maestro, still trying to keep as much of it together as we can, still trying to find out how much else we should be trying to get together. Thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to spending the day. Thanks.